As designers, we know that no project is truly ideal. And what I mean by this is that every project comes with its own handful of limitations and constraints. And that's truly the challenge behind interior design. You could look at these constraints as limiting your creativity, or you could look at it as a challenge to overcome and work around. Hi everyone, my name is Daniela and I'm an interior designer. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through a kitchen drawing set that I drew using rayon. So you're going to see how I turned a very dated and drab kitchen to a beautiful, sleek and contemporary kitchen that's actually functional. And you're gonna see that I had to come up with some very creative ways around the millwork. I created this drawing set using rayon design and rayon design is the fastest and easiest way to create beautiful, stunning 2D interior design drawing. It's web-based, it's very intuitive, and I know you'll enjoy this tool. So check the link in the description and download the kitchen shop drawing templates and follow along with me in this tutorial. Okay, so I've zoomed in on the layout here and I wanna to touch upon a few different things in this layout. As we go through this drawing set, you'll see that I'm going to highlight four major design challenges and we'll see how I created solutions within the floor plans, the sections and elevations. Let's start with taking a look at the layouts and highlighting the first design challenge. And what I want to make note of is the working triangle, the work triangle in the kitchen. And this is one of the first things that I actually learned in design school. And what this means is, is that your major appliances, such as the fridge, the range, the stove, the sink, should create some sort of a triangle. So if we look at that here, we can see this present. So this is point A, point B, and point C. This would create a triangle. And you can see here, this is a very standard layout, an L shape with an island. It's not anything that hasn't been done before. However, there were challenges in creating this island, which we'll get to later. However, looking at the function of this kitchen, I really did want to take advantage of every single corner and maximize the space in order to make this kitchen feel a little larger. So the first point I want to talk about is turning dead corners into functional areas. So we know that there's typically dead corners within obviously the corners of the millwork. And that's where you can incorporate different things. There's really cool stuff that you can do now, different types of Lazy Susans. And I'll show you later what I decided to uh, put in this corner. But I actually want to talk about this corner here. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because it doesn't necessarily register as a part of the kitchen, or at least it didn't first register as a part of the kitchen. This actually just, it was, it was just a vacant wall when I walked in. It had this post, it was just dead space. And my client's original idea was to just plop anything there just to fill the void. But the way that I saw it is that I needed to expand this kitchen. I needed to create the illusion that it was bigger than it was. And I needed to utilize that dead space. And I also wanted to integrate as much bulk. So bulk heads, posts into the millwork in a very, very clever way. So let's actually take a look at the elevation of this dead corner. And you can see that it actually turned into a gorgeous display cabinet. So there's integrated lighting. We integrated all of this, the pulse, the bulk. And I did it in such a clever way that the clients would really have an area to display all their little tchotchkes, which they wanted, but it also gave them more storage and even a place for cleaning storage because you'll see in this small kitchen, there really wasn't much opportunity for that. So this is the first thing that I wanted to make note of in this kitchen, utilizing and maximizing each space and dead corner. So now I'm going to move on and talk about the next two design challenges. 
And these design challenges actually go hand in hand. So it all had to revolve around creating a kitchen island in this space. So one, I had to work around the air returns. The HVAC, it was there, it could not change. Two, I had to work around support beams. So as you can see here, this is how the design ended up. And previous, this was a wall. And in an ideal world, my clients, they would have paid to completely remove this wall. What did this mean? This meant getting an engineer on board, creating the drawings, submitting to the city, the city of Toronto, which is a disaster, getting that approved, paying for that, paying for the labor, just so we didn't have these two beams here. And once again, would have that been ideal? Absolutely. But that wasn't the scenario here. Simply put, there just wasn't the budget for that. So I thought to myself, how do I work around this load bearing wall? I can't demolish it. What I can do is I can change it up a little bit. I can remove what isn't absolutely necessary. So that left me with two beams and the HVAC. And I thought, this is the prime location for the island. How am I supposed to work with this? But I decided to integrate it in the design, even try to make it look a little intentional. So let's touch upon the air return in the kitchen millwork. So it actually turned out phenomenal. You honestly can't even see. So basically the HVAC comes up here. The air return comes out through the millwork through these little slits that were created. And obviously this is custom millwork, but it was very, very clever. It's not an eyesore. Um, it was done beautifully and it allowed the island to just sit on top of that spot. And as you can see, I also had to work around these two beams. So once again, not an option to remove everything, but we ended up with these two beams and we also had some bulkheads that we couldn't avoid. And it kind of does look intentional in the end. This sort of looks like a little bit of an archway to enter. There is another archway that was created. And as you can see, I've totally integrated these beams into the island without actually taking away function. You can see that I still was able to integrate a microwave which is the below counter microwaves, which I recommend. And there is still some storage. And of course they have counter space. And I even integrated outlets into the posts. So it's a very, very clever way instead of adding, you know, an outlet for a plug in the stone. I see some designers doing that or, you know, they're in the millwork. I utilize the posts. So it was a very, very, tricky process in terms of installing the countertop and such there was a bit of a disaster story there but it was worth it in the end because we truly maximized the space and we maximized the budget so when it comes to beams you really need to think of it as an element in the design and ask yourself if there's a way to actually incorporate it can you make it look good in another world or in another style, I could have dressed this up in a very rustic manner, you know, made it a little bit more woodsy. That's a way that you could make it look more intentional. You could make it have looked more industrial. There's different ways to work around design challenges. But for the circumstances I was given, this is what I did with the islands. And I hope that you can appreciate it and maybe think about it or use it in your own kitchen design project. So let's talk about the next design challenge. And I've already touched upon this a little bit just because this element was just everywhere in the kitchen. And I mean bulkheads. So if we zoom in here, we can see the beautiful display cabinet. We can see that I concealed a bulkhead there. If we look further into the kitchen, we actually see that this theme repeats. So there's bulkheads all along here. There was more significant bulk here all along the crown of the kitchen. 
to where the ceiling and the wall met. And we couldn't remove this. So I had to work around it. So you can see here, I cleverly put a panel and I was able to build the cabinet on top of the fridge as I typically would do. And for the rest of the cabinetry, I intentionally designed a beautiful sleek crown to sort of absorb the bulkhead here. And honestly, I don't think that you would ever know that that's the reason why I did this beautiful crown. It truthfully looks very intentional. And that's the thing about good design. It should look intentional. So that was my walkthrough on a real life interior design project that was completed by yours truly. And I also want to make notes that the software that you use is very critical. As a designer, you're going to be using whatever software you're using a lot for many, many, many hours. So you want a reliable and fast software that is able to facilitate your interior design projects very easily. So if this video has given you a few ideas for your own small tricky kitchen, give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more in this series, leave us a comment down below. We would love to get back to you and we'd like to see you in the next video. So happy designing.